ladies and gentlemen, there's a bunch of things that we know for Company of Heroes 3, and I want to go over some of them now. I've played Company of Heroes 2 for, god, 500 plus hours at this point, I think. I love the game, I think it's really fun. The first thing that I really think is important to discuss is that the game engine that the game devs are using for Company of Heroes 3 is going to be the same one used for Company of Heroes 2, but then they've updated it, and we can see that when we look at Age of Empires 4 and Warhammer uh, Dawn of War 3. So let's dive into that a little bit. Dawn of War 3 was arguably a disappointment. I bought it, I spent my money on it. Not totally impressed with that game, especially not having co-op. That's an entirely different topic. My point simply is that um, the game engine that it ran on actually wasn't that bad. Now, when we move on to Age of Empires 4, there's some different things that we can talk about which might start to question Company of Heroes 3. And I just want to mention these because I hate to be a dick, but like I think it's important to mention. So since Company of Heroes 2, this game engine's only been used for Age of Empires 4 and Warhammer 3. On Age of Empires 4, actually people do have problems with the game engine in the form of when people try to run mods, for example, which Company of Heroes 2 is well known for. In Age of Empires 4, they often crash the game. With that being said, on Company of Heroes 2, I've never had any problems with the game engine, and it is a successor to that all the same. And so this isn't like a super big red flag, but it definitely is something to keep in mind. So for those of you living under a rock, Company of Heroes 3 releases in November the 17th. It doesn't seem like that's likely to change. It is very clear from the pre-order page of Company of Heroes 3 that you're going to be able to buy DLC decals and cosmetics which are going to make the infantry and armor look different relative to normal that you can put on essentially a skin. Now on top of this it's very clear that they're going to be adding in expansion packs. It's yet to be revealed if this is going to be specifically new maps or if it's going to be single player content or if it's going to be a new like faction that you can play as. I've gone through and looked at a lot of gameplay for Company of Heroes 3 in order to like get a better perspective of what likely it's going to be like if people should be excited or not, especially as a player myself. From what I can tell personally, it looks like this is a very conservative addition to the Company of Heroes franchise, which by the way is fine. I don't think that Company of Heroes 2 had much that it needed to fix, it was like a, it's just a very good game in general. Probably one of the best parts about Company of Heroes 2 are the custom maps that you can make and that like mod which like zooms out the camera, both of which make the quality life of the game a lot better. I'm really hoping that we get, you be able to match make um, with custom maps and likewise of course having custom map support initially would be very good. There's some really, really good Company of Heroes maps that are custom made arguably better than the default ones. I'm sorry to say, but it's true. And um, yeah, I just hope that Company of Heroes 3 does not like let people down in that way. If they are relying on DLC to add extra maps in, it, they're kind of financially disincentivized from allowing mod support for custom maps because they want people to pay money for them. Hopefully though, they don't go down that route, but I just want to make it clear that's a potential contributing factor to their decision. For Company of Heroes 3 on launch, there's going to be four factions, the British, Americans, and then there's also going to be two German factions. Another thing that's quite apparent is that they've like made the textures. So that's like all the ground elements that like is like the dart and the, the any hills and stuff. All of that visually looks better. And so I do also want to commend them on that change because it does drag Company of Heroes as a series into 2022. They have also decided to like take some feedback in regarding the UI and just know that it's improved now relative to what you're going to generally be seeing in the footage. And they've also seemed to hint that one of the factions they're going to likely add in at some point is going to probably be a Italian faction. Right now, I think they're just adding them into the pre-existing German faction. That's at least the vibe that I get from what I'm reading. Another thing I do want to quickly mention is a lot of countries on Steam get to buy the game at a discounted price because in their currency, the game would usually be cheaper. And so essentially, a lot of games like match the price of the game relative to the living expenses of that country. But I think with Company of Heroes, people seem to be complaining that there's a pricing issue. So maybe like if you're in Brazil, you have to pay a lot more than you would for other games. 
I think part of this is to stop like key sellers I assume. Now the game is being sold for 50 quid which is like a good chunk of money. Like even in the UK it costs 50 quid which is like more than normal. And then the DLC version costs 70 quid and that includes the fast expansion that Company of Heroes 3 releases. Now in regards to pricing I have something important to mention and that is that it isn't like Relic as a game studio oftentimes messes over their customers in this way. It is like usually a few months after launch or a few maybe a year or two after launch there will be sales at a massively discounted rate where you can pick the game up for like 10 quid 15 quid right now you can just buy it by default at 15 quid and that's without even having a sale for the company feels too so them trying to like min max how much people spend on launch uh, like i'm not super against especially if the game ends up being good there's also some miscellaneous things that i've seen the community generally want the game devs to fix before it being released for example when you try to put people into cover you can usually only get like one squad into cover in a certain position where before you could get two likewise i've seen some people complain about the audio levels within Company of Heroes 3 and in far that there should be someone that looks into that. One of the things I've not seen a single person really mention is balance. I think it's important that each faction has like relevancy and it isn't like something's really overpowered relative to the other. I think Company of Heroes 2 did this really well. Some people argue that the the, the Americans were slightly underpowered in Company of Heroes 2. I think that'd be fair to say in general. And so I'm just hoping they keep, like, the fact that people can really only say that in terms of balance and everything seems to be somewhat balanced. And in a tournament setting, it seems like there are a lot of things that get use. Maybe not as much armor than because there is so much anti-armor in Company Fields 2. But, like, there, there still is some. Um, so I think all of that's important to keep in mind. Um, and, yeah, just have balance and everything have some viability, I, th I think, is fun. So having a focus on that should be a priority as well. And I haven't, again, because nobody's really talking about it, nobody's mentioning it, it's difficult to know if that's going to be a focus within Company of Heroes 3 or if they are going to be more focused on, you know, how the factions feel and all of that kind of stuff, which is great, but I also want to see balance. There are some games which do balance for RTSs so bad, and I've had so many bad experiences in that regard. You know, I just hope that Company of Heroes 3 keeps up the good balance that Company of Three Heroes 2 had, because it is a strong point of the series. And a lot of people overlook it because of it being in a relatively good place. Again, armor is arguably, from what I understand, considered kind of weak, ironically. But like, um, yeah, other than that, from what I understand, um, like Company of Heroes 2 is considered quite balanced. Now, I would be super interested in hearing, like, what does everyone else think on this? Are you excited for Company of Heroes 3? Feel free to leave your thoughts, feelings, comments in the comment section. Um, I'd love to hear all that and subscribe to the channel if you're not already because it helps a bunch. Have a wonderful day. I'm out. GG. Bye bye.